The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Hawaii Money Resource with financial advisor Marco Muscovich. Marco Muscovich is registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities LLC, 7 Hanover Square, New York, New York, 10004, and at Fell Strategy Partners, 677 Ala Moana Boulevard, Suite 720, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96813. This show is for informational purposes only. Individual risk tolerance and investment objectives must be reviewed prior to making any specific recommendations. And now your host, Marco Marco Muscovich. Welcome back. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marco Muscovich, senior partner, Well Strategy Partners, also certified exit planner. You are listening to Hawaii Money Resource every Wednesday night, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., 760 KGU AM radio station, also 95.1 FM. Hawaii Money Resource has been on the air since 2011. We're going strong. We interview close to 500 guests so far. I mean, we should throw the party probably sometime soon. Uh, Hawaii Money Resources is here to pick the brain for our guests, of our guests, and pretty much try to help you understand how did they start a business, what does it take to run the business, why they're still in the business, and what they're looking for when they want to get out of the business. So pretty much learn from someone else's experience. People say that's cheaper than learning from your own. Hawaii Money Resource every Wednesday night. Also, you can check us online, two websites, hawaiimoneyresource.com. You can download the podcast there. You can listen live or businessexitplanninghawaii.com. We put the Hawaii Money Resource there as well. You can download the podcast or you can listen live. Businessexitplanninghawaii.com is all you need, all the resources you need for you to learn. What does it take for you to run the business successfully and how you can prepare your business so one day you can sell it for maximum amount of dollars and pay minimum taxes. Hawaii Money Resource or Businessexitplanninghawaii.com. Check our businessexitplanninghawaii.com for more events. We have a major event coming up towards the end of the year, so check it out and pretty much register. It is important to register because we're going to have a limited seating. Uh, other than that, I'm about to introduce today's guest, a good friend of ours, David Newman. David is the co-owner of Pine & Jigger. David, welcome to... Hawaii Money Resource. Wow, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you know what I like when guests comes and, and automatically they bring the value by showing on their business card there's like a recipe for a drink called Fifth Amendment. So everybody should know the Fifth Amendment is like pretty much you cannot say anything after you drink this drink, right? Exactly. Either you're going to be wasted or you're going to be having so much fun enjoying it that you don't want to actually say anything. So which one is it? I think it's that you just want to enjoy the drink in silence and sit there and enjoy it and not really you know, talk about anything. It sounds anyway. like he's also going to knock you out if you, if, you, if you didn't eat anything before this. That's the second one. <laughs> uh, David, uh, welcome to Hawaii Money Resource. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit what is Pine & Jigger? Uh, we just hit our six-year anniversary. Uh, we are a bar that specializes in craft cocktails, craft beer, and elevated pub food. And uh, you said six years going strong. Yeah, it's been really good. Uh, May 28th was our six-year anniversary. Um, and it was going so well, we had to make an expansion. <laughs> and we're going to talk about it because yeah. uh, it's it's very interesting expansion. I think everybody should open their ears uh, to learn about this expansion. I think it's uh, something that I'm going to do myself for research this coming uh, weekend and check it out myself. Uh, other than that, Dave, uh, the classic, on the beginning of the show, we talked a little bit about you. So just refresh our memory. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do for fun. I know you you are actually Pine and Jigger. Tell us a little bit about anything else. Is there anything else going on in your life? Absolutely. Uh, for fun, when I was little, I got sponsored bodyboarding. They actually sent me to Hawaii for a season to do contests and pictures. Um, so I fell in love with the culture and the people. Uh, ended up working for Nobu in Malibu, and uh, my dad had just passed away. Uh, they had opportunity to move to Hawaii 11 years ago to open the Nobu in Waikiki. Um, so I, I jumped on it. And so now for fun, I still try to get in the water as much as possible and take advantage of hiking and all the amazing things Hawaii has to offer. How much really uh, time you have to do all that? Uh, about seven minutes a day. Seven minutes a day. <laughs> 
So do you combine those seven That's minutes good. in like 49 minutes and do it once a week? I try to. I, I still try to get in the water at least once a week. Um, I feel like if you're going to live in Hawaii with the high cost of living and you're not taking advantage of, of the natural beauty, it's, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the two businesses take up a lot of time, but um, you know, quality of life is, is super important. Okay. Anything else you do? Um, you know, I, I'm love to get out and about town and, and check out what other people are doing. I think you got to keep abreast of what's going on, to, you know, to stay at the forefront of, of whatever industry you're in. Do you do you do you get a? I mean, we live in a small place. It's it's probably very easy to figure out what's going on because the the the, the club and club and restaurant industry is limited, so you pretty much know everybody. So the word travels really fast like when something's new open or something interesting is open and everybody's kind of going to the same places so it's easy to kind of keep track of what's going on right absolutely and it's and it's also a very social thing you know if you're gonna go check out a new spot you're gonna see all of the bartenders restaurant owners they are checking it out at the same time so, so it's, it's it's good and easy to keep track and stay in tune absolutely and, and networking is just huge in, the, in our industry we can talk about it a little bit later on in in uh, in uh, like third segment of our show and, and talk about industry just in general because that industry is important in Hawaii. There's a lot of fun going on in Hawaii, but I still think that we are way behind mainland. Absolutely. I think we're always chasing on the heels of the mainland you know, three to four years behind whatever's going on there, mm -hmm. which is great because recognizing trends is, is incredibly important to every business. Mm -hmm. And if in the restaurant food industry, bar industry, um, that's, that's what we do. That makes it easy for us in Hawaii. Sort of, right? Because, and competition is not that high, right? Right. Anyway, uh, so I appreciate you being a guest in our show, and I appreciate you sharing a little bit about yourself and all these seven minutes you can spend uh, for yourself per day. Um, why don't we take our first break? Once we come back from the break, we're going to learn how this all started. We're going to learn how the pain, pain, pine, pine and Jigger started. Today's guest is David Newman. Newman, he's a corner of Pine and Jigger. My name is Marco Mirsky. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 760 KGU. Part of the Wall Street Business Network. Okay, man. Time to be an all-star caregiver. Drive them to physical therapy. Doctor's appointments. Be there emotionally and physically. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find care guides at aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. When Dad needed help getting around, I became his driver. Any daughter would do the same. But soon enough, he needed help doing more things. And it was up to me to be his personal shopper and financial manager, too. And before I knew it, Dad moved in with me. So I became his cook his personal assistant, his physical therapist, and even his nurse. When I started taking care of Dad, I didn't realize all the roles I'd have to play. But no matter what, I know I'm still his daughter. We understand the many roles you play. And to help, we created an online caregiving resource center. At aarp.org caregiving, you can find resources and connect with the caregiving community. Together, we can better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving to learn more. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Once upon a time, there was a business owner who worked hard and watched his company flourish. <sighs> then came the time to sell his company and retire in Palm Beach. Yep. But the path to his happily ever after was full of pitfalls and monstrous taxes. Whatever was he to do? It's not a fairy tale, and the wrong strategy can deprive you of a storybook ending. I'm Marko Miuskovic, and I know about business valuation. I'm also a specialist in business exit, asset protection, and estate planning. Visit my website, businessexitplanninghawaii.com, and I promise you, you'll find more than just a trail of breadcrumbs. Businessexitplanninghawaii.com is an online resource designed to help you prepare for the final stage of your business's life cycle. At BusinessExitPlanningHawaii.com, you'll have no trouble at all finding workshops, podcasts, videos, articles, and more. Your happily ever after is just a click away at BusinessExitPlanningHawaii.com. Every single year, millions of average Americans like you have their personal lives virtually destroyed. In an instant, you could lose control of your bank accounts, credit cards, and worse, your very reputation can be stolen and violated. If you or a loved one is a victim of identity theft, FastIDRecovery.com can help you get it all back. 
At FastIDRecovery.com, you can put your trust in experts in the field of credit score restoration, IRS fraud resolution, document and ID replacement, and more. Without a fully managed protection and restoration service like FastIDRecovery.com, it can take hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars to reclaim what identity thieves have stolen and fix the chaos they leave behind. Your peace of mind is as valuable as your assets, and FastIDRecovery.com will get everything back, including your sanity. Relief is a simple click away at FastIDRecovery.com. That's FastIDRecovery.com. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource with financial advisor Marco Muscovich. If you'd like to speak to Marco, either on the air or after the show, call toll-free from Oahu and the Outer Islands, 877-695-2102. That's 877-695-2102. Welcome back. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marko Miuškovic, Senior Partner at Wealth Strategy Partners, also Certified Exit Planner. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource every Wednesday at 5 to 6 p.m. Right at time when you're stuck in traffic and you don't have anything else to do, you can turn in, turn and tune in 7.60 a.m. KGU or 95.1 FM. Hawaii Money Resource online, hawaiimoneyresource.com. You can download the podcast at hawaiimoneyresource.com. You can listen live. You can also see what our counterparts are doing on the mainland because we have something called Hawaii Resource Media now in four locations across the United States. So we're expanding a little bit, just trying to pick as many business owner brains out there, uh, not limited only to Hawaii, but we are in the United States uh, across the country. Hawaii Money Resource, then Business Exit Planning Hawaii.com, Business Exit Planning Hawaii.com. If you are checking for our events, we just posted new event is coming up. So please go online, register, limited seating for all of our business owner clients that would like to sell their business in one point in the future. How to prepare the business for sale so you can get maximum dollars and minimum taxes paid. Let's go back to our guest today, uh, Dave Newman. Dave is the corner of Pine and Jigger. Everybody knows the Pine and Jigger. If you don't know what Pine and Jigger is, go to the website, pineandjigger.com, or you can check them out at 1936 South King Street. If you're driving down the King Street towards the university, they will be on your left side. Parking in front, right? Yes. And make sure you go there early because the, the place gets crowded pretty easy, and it's good if you're hungry and thirsty. A, a little insider tip not everybody knows. We also have uh, 30 covered parking spaces on Young Street, 1939 Young. Oh, what is that? Okay. Good to know back, because yeah. not so many people know that, right? Exactly. Okay, good. So let's let's repeat that a couple of times during the show so people know that as well. That's That will be, uh, what, next building? Building next door? Yeah, so if you just swing around the block, if there's no parking in front, there's usually some something going on in the back. Okay, perfect. Anyway, um, so let, let's talk about how this all started. You, your six-year anniversary is coming up. Or it was we just, just, had, yeah. just had a six-year anniversary. And when you guys uh, uh, started, you were a unique place. You were pretty much on the, on, the, on the front end of the whole movement. At, at the time, there wasn't a lot of craft beer being served. Uh, craft cocktails were just starting to pick up steam. Um, so it, it was definitely a, a good timing issue for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, How did this all start? Like where the idea came from? Uh, I was trying to decide if I was going to buy a house or open a business. <laughs> I opted to buy a house. Um, my real estate agent is now my business partner, Darren Aguino. Um, so he, he said he was going to open a bar. I didn't believe him. Uh, now we're business partners six years later, along with uh, Grace Simon, Hideo, and uh, Nikki. So a good little crew. <laughs> so, okay, so I understand you guys were like what, probably sitting one day and like just just give us a story. I want to hear it because these stories are unique. So uh, Hideo and Grace uh, were husband and wife and then uh, Darren and Nikki, husband and wife. Um, like I said, he said, I'm going to open a bar. I didn't believe him. Um, he, he said I was a well-known bar guy around town if I'd be willing to do some consulting. I said, absolutely, you're helping me find a house and – met the partners and we basically all brought pictures of bars that we really liked from around the United States. Uh, taking that idea that, you know, stuff on the mainland's a little bit ahead of, of what's happening in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And everybody brought very similar photos of, of very similar style bars. So I knew we were on the same page. And then 
So, so let me ask you this: Like, did did you guys already have these photos, or you said, "Hey, let's meet in a month, or three months, or six months, bring the photos, whatever you find interesting on the, and let's talk about it." That's pretty much exactly what happened. We were like, "Let's get together and see if we're on the same page." Like, is the concept that we want to do similar? Um, and then the whole time we were just, you know, that feeling out process of of, of partners getting to know partners. It's, it's like getting married, right? And a good thing you guys are all friends. Yeah. How long have you been in a business before this happened? Um, I think I just hit my 24th anniversary as a bartender. <laughs> so wow. 20, 25 years in the industry. So is 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 like um, is there something that you were you know uh, planned like 24 years ago and said I'm gonna this is my career path or you were just like taking a day at a time? Day at a time. It's such a a great way to save up cash, and I would do a, you know really long trips. I did a two nine month trips through Europe. And so I would just kept thinking, oh, I'm going to go home and work for a little while, get some money and travel again. And next thing I know, 26 years went by. So, and, and I guess you never regret it. No, no. It's, you know, definitely a dream. Like, I'm incredibly fortunate. I still love to be behind the bar and, and make cocktails for people and just give people an incredible experience. How do you impossible. keep yourself up to the speed, though? You know, I think you probably at this point is like, for you, is like walking in the park, like easy, right? There's yeah. There's probably nothing that you don't know when it comes to drinks. No, no. I, I'm learning every day. It's it's crazy. The industry is changing so much and trying to keep up on trends. What's what's What are people going to want to drink in Hawaii two years from now? Because I want to be the one that, to introduce it. So like, if I tell you right now, like, oh, I think people are going to be drinking sherry in two years, you're going to look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. So, and in two years, people are going to be drinking sherry. <laughs> okay. So what people will drink in Hawaii in two years? What Actually, what are they drinking right now? Right now, uh, old fashions. Whiskey is king for sure. Um, but we're still getting a lot of people that are, are kind of making that transition from vodka into brown spirits. What about gin? gin gin's doing pretty well. Um, I think the trend that we'll actually see in the next few years for different bars are going to be bars that are like highly specialized. So right now you have a bar called Encore Downtown, and they specialize in agave, tequila, mezcal. I think you know a couple of years you see a gin bar. A bar that just, you know, they make everything else, but they're known for making the best gin cocktails and having the biggest gin selection. I'm a gin kind of guy, you know. My my drink is a Hendrix and tonic. So good, you know. And and I'm I just I don't know. I like refreshing drinks, you know. But I don't mind next time I stop by your bar, like get introduced to this Fifth Amendment <laughs> drink that you have on the back of your your, your card. Uh, so six years ago, you guys got together. Um, you formed a little plan and you said, let's see what kind of concept we are all looking. And I guess after the, some time, you all brought the same pictures of the bars that they, you come across, across the United States. You took a pictures, brought it to the table, and then what happened? Like, How did you formalize it from there? It, it was such a, a, a great combination because Dar- Darren was my real estate agent. Um, he also owns Smart Money Mortgage. So we had that, that side of things. Hideo uh, you know, flipped a lot of houses and, and was really good on the construction side. I mean, I knew the restaurant, bar, especially, you know, beer and cocktail side really, really well. So putting them all together, I mean, everybody had worked in different restaurants. So so you, you took care of the money part, you took care of the, the, the look part, and then you took care of actually the final product. Yeah. And I mean, everybody told us not to open on King Street right there. Like, it's a bad spot. So many places have gone out of business. But Darren, with the real estate background, he's like, no, there's like a lot of people with disposable income in the neighborhood. Like it's it's got good freeway access. It has a lot of and there's parking. Like it's true, huge for true. Hawaii. I think the in Hawaii for some reason if you don't have parking you can over it. It's brutal. It's brutal, right? So when you have a parking, you're like already fifty percent better than those people don't have one. Uh, but what about the the like you said like a lot of people with disposable income in the neighborhood? But is it really true that people are actually coming from the neighborhood and not coming from somewhere else? Because it looks like people are coming from all over. It, it's definitely a combination of both, but the amount of people now that are walking or even like – we're getting a lot of people coming in with Beaky. So they're riding the bikes. We have a, a rack right out in front, and it wasn't our plan. Like, City did it. So. Oh, City put a Beaky in front of the yeah. – the, Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So I guess if you you drive, ride Beaky there, and then from there you Uber. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> and then, you know, for us, it's great for the people that are walking. It's a little less worry about third-party liability, you know. Mm-hmm. People want that last drink, and you're like, yeah, you're kind of on the border. You know, we, we always want to be safe. And they're like, hey, I, I live next door. I'm walking. I'm like, okay. 
you probably have. You can talk about this as a part of the business, like the liability part. It's, it's important and how you protect your liabilities and, and how do you actually prevent the liabilities. We can talk about it in a, in a third segment. But now let, let's let, – because we I try to pick our guest brain and, you know, partnerships is, like you said, like a marriage. And unfortunately, a lot of partnerships end up in ugly divorce. And, and people usually, like, don't think about the exit out of the partnerships until the, something happened, right? Um uh, how did you guys like, you know, in the beginning talk about it? And, and did you guys actually brainstorm about that part? Like what if something goes wrong and you guys don't agree on certain things and what will be the solution? And second follow-up question is how did you determine who's going to do what? Um, the, the, who was going to do what was the easy part because the, those roles were defined by everybody's strengths. So Grace, um, Grace Simon was our opening GM. And she just had an incredible background in that area. I was ran everything I had to do with beverages because that was my background. And then the build out, I helped Hideo, but that was, you know, a lot of him. Um, you know, we weren't spending a ton of money to get the bar open through, you know, contractors and keep you over here, keep your starting yeah. costs down. And I think that at, at that time, I'm thinking now it's incredibly smart, you know, let, you know, see what you can get by on and then expand the business with, with the profits versus dumping too much money in and not having enough working capital to get through the first year. Was it a, like, what, what is your look right now? Was it like the same look on the startup? Or you guys kind of slowly moved and kind of in, increased and enhanced? And uh, we, we definitely enhanced where, where we, the things that we kind of cut the corners on, we've gone back and, and got that up to where we wanted them. But um, it, lo- it looks incredibly similar. Mm-hmm. And then the new project looks ridiculously nice. So, did you talk about it? Like, what if something happened in the in a whole, you know, deal of doing business together? Absolutely. So we we spent a lot of time on that with a really strong operating agreement, because um, I think that's a concern for everybody. You know, like, what if one of us gets sick or God forbid passes away? Like, then who's going to jump in and take over that part of the business? Or if somebody wants to sell, how do we work that out ahead of time? Mm-hmm. Um, and and we just try to be, I think. The most important thing we are finding with partners is find people that are fair. So, you, you know, if, if you can come up with a concept that's like, hey, if I want to do this, is it okay for you to do the same thing? So, like, if I want to sell, what, what would I want? And then if I have to be okay with one of the other partners saying the exact same thing. So that's the one, like, hey, I want a half million for this. Okay, good. I sell you mine for half million. Exactly. Give me that. <laughs> Here. You want to take my cut for half? And then say, no, but why should I buy yours then? Exactly. Okay, good. That, that makes sense. And and uh, um, so I guess you guys had an operating agreement. You have a, I assume, buy and sell agreement as a part of it. Exactly. Um, in last six years, was it, ever, was it ever a partnership to the kind of test? Did you ever put a partnership to the test? Ah, uh, definitely. You know, um, my partners have opened other businesses. I've had other opportunities, and and all those things put the stress on that relationship. You know, is that other business competing with us? Um, is my time doing consulting? Is it fair to the business? Um, how much do do I get paid as the the person that's there the, every day? But uh, like, fortunately for me, my partners are incredibly fair, and and we've been able to work through those things. Good. Um- so six years, like any any like, what did you learn? Like when you look at when when moment when you start, uh, and let me ask you this: I didn't ask you this. Did you own any any business prior to this one? I had been a like a minority small investor in other places that I had worked at, but never like I completely committed myself to that bar. So nothing like this. Nothing like so, that. So okay, so now you you you're jumping into completely uncharted territory and you own waters or whatever. And six years later, like how does it look? How how much different it looks? From operational standpoint, from processes, procedures, like, like how does it like look now, and what is it that you can recall that you guys did to get yourself to the next level? Uh, operationally, it's it's a, an evolution, and, and every aspect of the business has been like you think you're going to open a bar and it's going to have this concept, or open a, a, a business and be that concept, but um, your guests, your, your customers, whatever field you're in, dictate a lot of what your business is. Um, which is great because if you're listening to the feedback, then then you can stay ahead. Uh, but operationally, you know, I'm the only one that's left in that restaurant on a daily basis. Um, you know, Grace and Hideo have moved on to other projects, uh, and same with Darren and his wife Nikki. Um, you know, they own two businesses. Grace and Hideo own another bar restaurant downtown, so I'm the one that's that's on the the floor every day. Um, and that's the other thing that I, I didn't realize it was a huge lesson for me was. It's so easy to overwork when it's your business. Like 
It's not hard, right? No, it's, it's, you, 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 you're doing something you enjoy, right? Yeah. And then you look at the end of the week and you're like, wow, I, you know, I put in 82 hours this week. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, That's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a strain on my outside relationships for sure. Mm-hmm. So is there something that you kind of like look back and says, okay, is this something I can maybe improve or, or you know, modify or maybe bring some additional people? Because it's also a risk to the business, right? You're probably doing a lot of stuff that nobody else can do. Right. And, and I think like that's part of my growth is like learning how to um, delegate and, and being willing to teach every aspect of what I do. But I, I now actually love that part. Like I'm like teaching my guys everything that they want to learn, whether that's the back of the house numbers, um, any you know secret recipes or any of that stuff. It's just like tricks, I want tricks of all the trade. The tricks of trade, mm-hmm. and I just want to share all of that stuff. I mean, I've been in the industry for 25 years. I don't know how much longer I'll, you know, want to continue to do that, but I want to pass on what I've learned to to my crew for sure. Yeah, talking about that, like how, how what is the time frame? What is the expiration date on someone like you in this business? Uh, and the, the good thing now is that there's so many opportunities that weren't available even 10 years ago. So now I could I could leave the bar restaurant industry and become a brand ambassador, find a brand that I really enjoy, and then start representing them. Um, and there's a lot of other things. And consulting stuff is becoming much more lucrative and, and much more in demand. Um, every bar restaurant that's opening now wants to have a craft cocktail program. Hotels are hitting me up like, hey, like what could we incorporate that you guys are doing that would make business sense for us? So for for your opportunity, like for you personally, there's a lot of opportunity. For for your industry, people like yourself, there's a lot of opportunity. But like what about you within this business? What other opportunities you can see yourself? Like how you can remove yourself from the day-to-day and like create another opportunity for you and and just get the business to the next level? Yeah, and that's exactly what we've been talking about a lot for the last couple of years. We've you know talking to investors about opening a pint and jigger in Japan. We're talking about opening one on the west side. You know, we looked at different opportunities. Unfortunately, you know we've we've pursued two of them and they've fallen through just because of deals with the landlords. But um, mm-hmm. that's an aspect for me personally that I want to grow and I want to learn is you know how to multiply. How to multiply, um, and I pretty much put myself in the position where I don't need to be there in in that restaurant. Like we could pick that restaurant up and put it in a lot of other places and it would do really well. If we put that in Santa Barbara or San Diego, it would do incredibly well. Perfect. Why don't we take our second break for today? Today's guest is Dave Newman Davies, the corner of Pine and Jigger. Uh, Pineandjigger.com. You can find him also at 1936 South King Street. Parking in front, parking in the back. Uh, other than that, you're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marco Mirsko. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 760 KGU. Part of the Wall Street Business Network. Did you know that pharmacists work in hospitals? We work around the clock with doctors and nurses to make sure you get the best results from your medicine. We're the medication experts. So when you or someone you love is in the hospital and have questions about your medicine, ask for me, your hospital pharmacist. Brought to you by the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. Find out more at safemedication.com. If you're like most people, you've got a calendar to help you stay organized, or a day planner, or some PDA you're still figuring out how to use. And it helps keep track of the anniversaries and birthdays that our overworked brains can't remember. That way we know exactly when things will happen and how long we can put off making arrangements for them. But there are some things in life that we can't put on our calendar because we don't know when they'll happen, if at all. Like some sort of household emergency or a disaster or even a fire. But when it does, the time to prepare for it has already passed. So get together with your family today and prepare for the unexpected by establishing a family disaster plan with help from your local Red Cross. That way you'll all know exactly what to do in the event of an emergency, where to go, who to call, how to help each other. But do it today so you won't get caught by surprise tomorrow. When we come together, we become part of something bigger than us all. To find out how to make your family disaster plan, visit redcross.org. The American Red Cross. Together, we can save a life. Every single year, millions of average Americans like you have their personal lives virtually destroyed. In an instant, you could lose control of your bank accounts, credit cards, and worse, your very reputation can be stolen and violated. If you or a loved one is a victim of identity theft, FastIDRecovery.com can help you get it all back. 
At FastIDRecovery.com, you can put your trust in experts in the field of credit score restoration, IRS fraud resolution, document and ID replacement, and more. Without a fully managed protection and restoration service like FastIDRecovery.com, it can take hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars to reclaim what identity thieves have stolen and fix the chaos they leave behind. Your peace of mind is as valuable as your assets, and FastIDRecovery.com will get everything back, including your sanity. Relief is a simple click away at FastIDRecovery.com. That's FastIDRecovery.com. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource with financial advisor Marco Muscovich. If you'd like to speak to Marco, either on the air or after the show, call toll-free from Oahu and the Outer Islands, 877-695-2102. That's 877-695-2102. Welcome back. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marko Miuskovic, Senior Partner of Wealth Strategy Partners. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource every Wednesday night, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., KGU 760 a.m. or 95.1 FM. If you miss our show by any chance uh, because you were doing something else, I guess, you can always go online, hawaiimoneyresource.com, and download the podcast or another website, businessexitplanninghawaii.com. Click on the resources, go to the radio show, scroll over, it says radio podcast. You can listen live as well. Hawaii Money Resource and Business Exit Planning Hawaii.com. If you are a business owner, you're looking to get out of the business in one point in the future, make sure you go to our website, learn a little bit. We have a lot of resources, white papers, articles that you can read. And the best thing is you can always reach us quickly. Hawaii Money Resource every day. Let's go back to our guest. Um, Today's guest is Dave Newman. Dave is a corner of Pine and Jigger. Pine and Jigger, best place in town. If you would like uh, a little intimate place, uh, a little food, you're a little hungry, you're a little thirsty, you go there, you Uber there or Biki there, and then Uber home or walk home. Um, David, six years ago, you guys started. Now you're running strong. You're pretty much on the front end on the whole movement now, craft beers, uh, you know, specialty uh, uh, bars. Now, six years into it, competition is around. Uh, new concepts are coming online. How do you stay uh, proactive? How do you stay uh, uh, on that front end six years into it? I mean, it's a lot of hard work, uh, but then you're also – I'm trying to travel as much as I can learn concepts from other places, see what, what might be coming a new trend. And then I'm just trying to push the boundary of, of what we can. Um, so that's why our, our, we open our new spot. We're going to talk about it in just a second. Uh, uh, but before we talk about that, like uh, the question for you is like, you know, and I, I will ask you to actually lay on, like what's coming up, what's next uh, for you personally, six years uh, later, will you do the same thing? Yeah, I would do it. I would do it over again, and I would. I would love to open in another location. Will you do it the same way, or you will do something different? I'll definitely do things differently. How many? How many learning mistakes did you make in the last six years? Uh, one incredibly large uh, mistake, or two two large mistakes that I've learned uh, great lessons from. Uh, the one was. Um, just Getting in bed with the wrong landlord for a second second location and, and that cost us a lot of money and a lot of time. Um, can you can you tell us a little bit? Like you don't need to go specific, but tell us what you learned. Like what what is it that you need to be on the lookout? If you're a business owner out there or someone starting the business, what you should be aware of? I would I would say you know contact anybody that 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 landlord is also dealing with um, and and have an intimate conversation with them. You know, after the fact, we learned from other other tenants of this landlord that he was he, doing the same thing. He was shady and whatnot, and we had a lease signed with him. It could have gone to court, but you know, he had basically signed somebody else to the same lease on our on the on the one we had. <laughs> wow! So, so he was collecting two rents. I, I mean, he was trying. <laughs> so, how uh, did you guys agree on this sharing the space? <laughs> exactly. So. You know, he came back to us with a new drawing of the space that had a hallway right through, through the middle of our restaurant. He's like, well, we have to do this. This is just all <laughs> oh. – he's just a terrible landlord. So that was a, an incredibly valuable lesson. How did you get out of it? Uh, we, I mean, we lost a chunk of money because we had spent money for architects' drawings and attorneys and whatnot. But uh, eventually we were through <laughs> threats from attorneys. We were able to get our security deposit back. 
What is the second mistake? A second mistake is, and this is, you know, more, more pertains to the restaurant industry, is just the, the value of the space that you dedicate in your in your bar or restaurant to seating and guests and the, and to the back of the house kitchen and storage and stuff. Like the the percentage needs to be really really high in in favor of area for seating. So you want to maximize in the cash earning potential, right? Exactly. The money earning potential. Yeah. So us expanding our kitchen a few years ago was a really poor business decision. Hmm. It made it a better working environment for our, our chefs, which is great, but uh, money-wise, it didn't make any sense. Okay, so that's a, how do you figure that out after? Or you just deal with it? I mean, we're dealing with it now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we tried to expand and open for, for brunch seven days a week just to take, you know, recoup the money that we spent moving the kitchen and expanding it. But business-wise, it just didn't, numbers-wise, it didn't really peter out. Okay. So now this is the, the important thing uh, because you have a new concept in place, uh, something that's already going on. Uh, due to a nature of that business, it's not something that you really want to advertise, uh, but we're going to talk about it. It's not a commercial. It's right. a conversation. <laughs> Let's just talk. We'll just have a conversation. We have a conversation. So tell me about the little, little new thing that's going on. Not relatively new. It's not really brand new starting yesterday, but been around for like – few months. Yeah, a few months. Um, we were subleasing from uh, Gulick Deli uh, when their lease came up or when the lease came up. Uh, the landlords didn't want to renew them and asked us to take over that space. So we had a concept in mind uh, for a secret bar, a speakeasy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all the speakeasies back during Prohibition had facades of different things. So ours is called Harry's Hardware Emporium. If you look on the outside of the building, it looks like a closed hardware store. Uh, it has a secret entrance through Pint and Jigger. And, and once you go inside, you've transported to 1925 Chicago, New Orleans. And uh, tell me a bit, uh, like you said, the day of opening was uh, uh, the last day of, of prohibition. Yeah. So uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, Playboy magazine ranked Pint and Jigger one of the top five bars in the country to celebrate repeal day, which is December 5th. Uh, we do a huge party every year. Uh, and I felt it was only appropriate if we could open the speakeasy on that day. So now, like, like, the, 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 try to uh, kind of paint the picture of the for the people. Like, what is it that they they can be facing when they walk in? First of all, they cannot just walk in, right? Right. So, uh, what gotta, is the process? The process would be to contact our host. Uh, te- text message is best three seven nine three eight eight seven. Just let the host know what day, and what time you want to come in with how many people, and um, host will get back to you as soon as possible, and we'll try to get you set up. Um, it's getting busier and busier. Uh, you're going to come through Pint and Jigger. You're going to find the door to the, the secret bar and uh, open that up. There'll be a little hallway host to be at the end to greet you. Uh, you're going to have to give them the password that was texted to you. Uh, go through a secret door. What uh, if they don't have a password? It's not <laughs> looking you, good for you. Are you hard on the, on the people and tell like, you, I'm sorry, I'm go sorry. back to the Pint and Jigger. Yeah, you can go enjoy prefer. drinking Pint and Jigger while you figure out your password. <laughs> Um, and then, and like I said, once you open the door, you're just you're just going to be blown away. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun to stand behind that bar and, and watch people come through. Like their eyes light up like like children in a chocolate factory. It's really cool. So if you've never been in any of the speakeasy, like if you've been in a speakeasy, that's what you're going to expect. Yeah. If you've never been in, that's like quite a show. It's I think it's more like show, right? It's not really like it was back in 1920s, but this is more like show. Absolutely, it's it's a tribute to a, a, an era gone by, right? So, so what what do you, what do you expect inside? Like, what what do you why what's your what's different than in uh, Pine and Jigger? So the the ambiance in the place is totally different. You know, Pine and Jigger is TV is and loud and really ruckus, and this is just this incredibly intimate experience. Um, it's like a living room. It's like a living room. The oversized chairs, <laughs> incredibly comfortable. There's chandelier. There's tin ceilings. Beautiful ornate wallpaper. Wood. Wood. Mahogany. Uh, there's a secret. I don't want to spoil it for everybody, but there's a a secret entrance exit that is hidden. So you walk through and then when you go to leave, you're like, I don't even know where I came in from. <laughs> so it's super fun. How does and, drunk people find a way out? Exactly. <laughs> and then, and then well, the cocktails are, are just elevated as far as we could take it. So we pushed the boundaries as far as we could. What is the, what is the underlining, uh, uh, liquor? Whiskey. So it's like my favorite and Fortunately, right now, it's incredibly popular. So. so when you were guys setting this out, how did you – okay, so the, the lease, available lease came out, and then you said, okay, 
how did you decide to do it? So, so we we wanted to take over the space so we could expand our kitchen and and then also, you know, take this next step forward with the evolution of cocktails and the business to, at the same time, and keep us at the forefront of what people are talking about and experiencing. And like how long it took you to make a billet? Because it sounds like there was a lot of construction going on there. Yeah, we unfortunately got jammed up on some permitting, so we were legally not allowed to be in the space for about six months, which hurt a lot. There will be another you know, business lesson that I would, I would learn. Um, what was it? Um, you know, the building inspector came by and, and put a stop work order on us, said that we had, uh, you know, our, our current building permit was pending. And we got jammed up just because there was an open permit on that space that was open in 2001, which is crazy because multiple permits had opened and closed during that time. But this one was never closed. This one was never closed. And they took this opportunity to kind of stick it to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so, (laughs) why is always around real estate, Uh, (laughs) right? Or permitting or building or something. Uh, Okay. Well, don't forget where we live too, right? Uh, so concept is put in place. What What is your experience so far? I'm just blown away. I mean, we're operating a business where you can't advertise, and it's full. Like we're two days out on reservations right now, so it's pretty incredible. The, Why you cannot advertise? I mean, it's a speakeasy, so it, you know, kind of goes against the whole concept. I can't really have pictures out there floating around of of, of what people are going to experience because we want you to come in and have that experience of surprise and. So and I guess people that come in and enjoy. It, the entertainment, they, they're pretty much your advertising source. Exactly. So we were very fortunate at Pine Jigger to be uh, very driven by industry bar. So other bartenders, restaurant tours, cooks, chefs, they all come down and enjoy themselves. And um, they spread the word incredibly well. So the good thing about the permitting taking longer is there was a lot of anticipation built up. So when it opens, people just like yeah, poured like, in. Yeah. Okay, good. Um Anything you learn from this experience other than just uh, 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 permitting stuff? Uh, any any opportunity for multiplying and, and just expanding? Absolutely. Um, I, I say the one thing that just blew me away was the just the uh, utter power of social media. Now, I you, people come in and they have a they have a dish. We do a, a bone marrow mac and cheese, and it's a slab of bone marrow over a skillet of mac and cheese. And people are like this is so Instagrammable. Like, like, when did that term come up? Like, <laughs> just recently. Yeah. So, but like the idea that now chefs are creating dishes and bartenders are creating cocktails, and you're making your build out places to look Instagrammable, because it's such a huge factor in in doing business. Um, and if we did, you know, if we do open another bar, I love the idea of having an attached, different concept to it. To mixing different concepts. Yeah, I mean, you you already have so many fixed expenditures. You have the rent you have the kitchen the kitchen the lights storage we're sharing the same chef yeah. we're sharing the same kitchen but now we have a, a section of the business that's much more profitable because all those fixed things are already being taken care of by pint and jigger mm-hmm. profit margins are bigger exactly do you set that up as a separate business or as a part as a line item on your on your on your p l statement uh we are set, set up as a separate business which is incredibly hassle on the paperwork side but um i want to be able to See where it. We're, exactly, uh, and you know, competition is always looking. You know, people like sometimes they don't have enough uh, uh, guts to to go in to something by themselves, so they want to see someone do it first, and they don't want to copy whatever is best, and then just put their own flavor and open it. So, how do you like? How you go after? Like, how do you keep yourself on top of it? Because is there a competition out there, even for speakeasy? There is now. We basically had all all of them open like right around the same time. We had. Uh, one on Young Street above Aloha Beer called Highbrow, and then there's one in Kailua called uh, the Gas Lamp. Um, we all opened right around the same time, and um, it's just kind of one of those things. I think we recognize the trend happening on the mainland, and all try to capitalize on it at the same time. So then it's just how do you separate yourself from everybody who's going to now be trying to do the same thing? And my my idea is always like just do it, do it to the level that it's going to make it incredibly difficult for anybody else to match that. So you might want to open another speakeasy now, but you're going to have a really hard time replicating what we did. What is the, what is your secret ingredients that that it will be hard for someone to replicate? Uh, I everything, and we put thought into every detail of that space. Um, I'm, I'm excited for you to see it on Friday. But uh, <laughs> and then it's just you know we work hard. We tried. We we spent a lot of time on on our bartenders' staff knowledge. 
you know, you can stock 150 whiskeys and call yourself a whiskey bar, but if nobody can tell you the difference between any of them. And give you some background education on it. Then you're, you're a spot with a great selection, and I wouldn't call you a whiskey bar. And nobody will drink it. Yeah, I mean, people are going to drink regardless, but if you want that level of experience, you, you can't just go out and find bartenders that, that are willing to put that kind of effort in. Okay, so let's talk about like a little bit about your business is, is has a lot of benefits, but it's also there's a lot of liabilities because a lot of people like, you know, we know that people drink and drive and people do all kind of crazy stuff and then drink. How do you protect yourself from something like that? Um, I mean, that's that's a lot of training and there's just management floor presence. Um, the really good thing about the speakeasy is there's no, we don't do standing room. So every, we're having conversations with every guest and that's the best way for us to determine like. Because seating is limited, right? Right. So if I'm having a conversation with you, I can tell what level of, of drunk you are. You know, if I cannot speak, then we know. Right, and th- I mean, third-party liability is is an unfortunate thing because a lot of times it's beyond a owner's control or a business's control. I mean, if you drink in the parking lot, which every night I find bottles in our parking lot, and you go into a bar, you have one drink, you could be well beyond the the limit. Right, so they might be coming already gassed. Exactly. So you know, it's it's definitely a a, a huge concern for us and something we, we try to pay as much attention to as possible. Do you have any uh, process around that? Like what is the limit like when you see or when you – like when you're tracking someone, like how many drinks they have? Do you do you keep tab on that? Oh, absolutely. We, we keep track of that with, with each individual guest because, you know, you get a 350-pound guy, you can definitely consume more than a 98-pound woman. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I've, I've seen people have eight drinks and not slur and be completely fine and – you're like, wow, like that's incredible. You got to see one person has one drink and they're on the floor. <laughs> so it's it's a challenge for sure. Um, and how often do you eighty six people? I don't know eighty six people very often. We're very fortunate that the environment that we created at Pint and Jigger and especially in the speakeasy is just it's not incredibly conducive to, to over con- over consumption. Okay, so it's it's the environment dictates how much and you know Absolutely. Limits. Prices as well. I mean, if you're out just to go trying to get completely drunk, you're going to find the cheapest bar with, the, you know, the cheapest beer drink. I mean, that's pretty much how I drank in college. <laughs> find the find the bar that's selling the dollar beers. Right. Okay. Perfect. Uh, what about involvement in association? Just a couple of minutes and, and then we're going to uh, take a last break for today. Uh, just the industry in general and associations and involvement just in the industry from that aspect and we have we have two huge ones we have the you know the hawaii restaurant association and also the united states bartenders guild hawaii chapter and uh, they're both just incredible trade organizations that that really kind of use uh the, the power of, of of a guild to uh to make influence so whether that's protecting our industry or or, or growing it does it help um a, a ton it's i know it, you had you were you were part of it big time before I ran, I ran our, our chapter of the United States Bartenders Guild for seven years. Um, it's about 140 members, and you would say like the, the best of the best of the bartenders and, and restaurant owners are involved. Um, a lot of resources. A lot of resources, incredible amount of, of, of knowledge and training, but also the business side. There's, there's really good resources there. So if well. someone is opening the restaurant or bar or something, it, it will be advisable to go in and join. Absolutely. Can, you, can someone join who is not in a business? Yeah. So we have a – three categories for the United States Bartenders Guild. There's like an enthusiast, which you could join as. You could join as a bartender or an industry professional. Perfect. Why don't we take our last break for today? Today's guest is Dave Newman, Pine and Jigger, pineandjigger.com. Uh, you can find him also in 1936 South King Street. My name is Mark Komir, you listening to Hawaii Money Resource. We'll be right back. Seven sixty KGU, part of the Wall Street Business Network. The Oahu SPCA offers low-cost spay neuter wellness and other veterinary services at our new shelter and clinic in Wahiawa. Oahu SPCA's affordable spay neuter clinics and adoption services are helping to humanely reduce the number of homeless animals. Call seven five four one five one nine or online at oahuspca.org. Oahu SPCA, helping animals, saving lives. People put a lot of thought into going into business. But not so much into how they'll get out. 
which makes it easy to get stuck. That's why Marco Muscovich handpicks a team of lawyers, accountants, tax, and industry specialists to help you make your business exit plan. You get yourself into business, Marco will help you get out. Registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, PAS, OSJ 7 Hanover Square, New York, New York, 10004, 1-888-600-4667. Securities, products, and advisory services offered through PAS, member FINRA, SIPC, financial representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America. Guardian, New York, New York, PAS is an indirect wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. Wealth Strategy Partners, LLC is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian, 2015-09890. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource with financial advisor Marco Muscovich. If you'd like to speak to Marco, either on the air or after the show, call toll-free from Oahu and the Outer Islands, 877-695-2102. That's 877-695-2102. Welcome back. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marco Muscovich. Uh, Hawaii Money Resource every Wednesday night, 5 to 6 p.m., 760 KGO AM radio or 95.1 FM. HawaiiMoneyResource.com or BusinessExitPlanningHawaii.com. Today's guest is David Newman, a Pine and Jigger. Pine and Jigger on a King Street um, with a new addition to it. You need to go there and give them a password and they might let you in a secret room with a completely different speakeasy concept and you're going to be up for surprise and that's what I'm going to do this coming weekend. We're gonna, I'm going for a surprise. Uh, David, uh, usually on the end of the show, uh, we have like uh, three questions that we ask and the first question is like, what is the future for Pine and Jigger and Speakeasy? Like wh- where do you guys want to go? So I, th- and I think this brings up a lot of what you actually do. Um, you know, do we want to franchise? Do we want to expand? At what point will we want to sell? Um, I, I told my partners that I would be incredibly interested to do at least three locations. So I think maybe one in Osaka and another one in Hawaii and then one more in the mainland. And at that point, I'll probably you know, Pull the plug. Hit, hit you up and see what I need to do to sell my business. <laughs> then it's going to be Marco. I need, I'm out. Yeah. And because it's, it's tough, especially for you. You are the, the working partner. You are in the business like someone like said, like 82 hours a week. It's, yeah. it's, you, you put a toe on you. So you, 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 energy, you, you know, it's just like people don't get younger. Exactly. And, and at, at what point do I want to completely remove myself from the day-to-day aspects of, of running a business? Probably before you become alcoholic completely. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so all jokes on side. So you, you guys are looking to expand uh, because you have a good concept. You have a good brand already established. Processes and pr- procedures are in place. So you just need to replicate it. Uh, is there any time frame around it? Like next year, two years, three years? What is it? Uh, I think we, our goal would be to get another pint and jigger open within two years. And and hopefully we'd learn from the lessons of the, the last mistake. So we'll find a better landlord. Mm-hmm. So the the, uh, the talks are in 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 play? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So the second question is like how are you going to get out? <laughs> uh, like I said, uh, for me, I'm, I'm in for three additional locations at which point, um, you know, I would be very interested in that point to, to probably sell my share of ownership or – figure out what my partners want to do and either start setting it up for franchising or, or selling the business as a whole. Did you ever thought about what you will do next? I'm going to retire. I know, but you're still young for that. Come uh, on, even if you, yeah, if you do all this, money. <laughs> if you do this in the next three or four years, like you're, you're not going to be even 50. Yeah. So yeah. you're like, what's the plan? What, you have any anything that you ever you know wanted to do? Yeah, there's there's definitely a few things on the, on, the, on my plate. Um I realized, uh, well, I was told a few years ago and, uh, by a really good contemporary bartender, uh, Jeffrey Morgenthaler in, in Portland. He's one of the probably top five bartenders in the United States. He's like, you need to start considering yourself as a brand as much as, as you consider Pine Jigger a brand. So I've been actively pursuing that and working on a book and then you know, setting up as, as much as I can for consulting and, and what I want to do in my next phase. Well, now it sounds like even we should do the radio show only in that. It sounds very interesting. Uh, and the last question for today is like, you know, you have a people that are listening to our show and they're kind of like learning from everybody's experience. Just the 20 seconds for the end. Like what will be the word of wisdom for someone who's just starting with the business, regardless of the trade? 
Um, word of wisdom is going to be just homework, homework, homework. You know, meet that landlord. See see what his tenants are. Do the um, background check. And another thing I'd say is make sure you have enough working capital to get by for at least three to four months. Before, because you never know. You never know how your business is going to start in the beginning. David, thank you so much for being guest at Hawaii Money Resource. Thank you so much for having me. This was a great show. If you guys missed by any chance, you can always go online, businessexitplayinghawaii.com or hawaiimoneyresource.com and download the podcast. Today's guest, David, Dave Newman, Pine and Jigger, Pine and Jigger on King Street. Other than that, my name is Mark Komiuszkovich. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. The Living Balance Sheet and the Living Balance Sheet logo are registered service marks of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, New York, New York. The graphics and text used herein are the exclusive property of Guardian and protected under U.S. and international copyright laws. Copyright 2005 to 2011. The Guardian Life Insurance Company of America. This show is for informational purposes only. Individual risk tolerance and investment objectives must be reviewed prior to making any specific recommendations. Marco Muscovich is a registered representative and financial advisor for Park Avenue Securities, LLC, 7 Hanover Square, New York, New York, 10004. Securities products, services, and advisory services are offered through Park Avenue Securities, a registered broker, dealer, and investment advisor, 888-600-4667. Financial representative, the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, New York, New York. Park Avenue Securities is an indirect, wholly owned subsidiary of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America. Wealth Strategy Partners is not an affiliate or subsidiary of Park Avenue Securities or the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America. Park Avenue Securities is a member of FINRA SIPC.